Very, very healthy looking fish. I remember a couple years ago when the grass was, was gone, there was only a few pockets where there was a little bit of grass and the fish were all right there. So it's certainly that, that grass is the key to the ecosystem, it's the key to all that life. And man, the snook fishing this year has been the best it's ever been. There's little red fish around everywhere and they're getting bigger by the day. It's really just the fishing all over, the trout fishing has been great. Just everything back in, in the Everglades has been phenomenal this year. Not too often you have to chase a snook, Tom. Right? <laughs> Yeah! Come on, come on! Oh! He ate it! He ate it! He ate it. He ate it. Nice, baby! Yeah, that's what I'm talking about! I thought you said you had to... relax. Oh! Dude, relax. he just ripped my boat off! Oh! Awesome! Look at that big boy! The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, with Captain Tom Rowland and Captain Rich Tudor. All right, trucks park, ready to roll. All right, a little breezy. Might need my jacket. Yeah, it might be a little bumpy ride on the way over, but I want to fish the skiff because the water is going to drop out this afternoon there's been a lot of a lot of reds and snook up on the uh, shallow edges yeah so it'll be fun to not be limited by our draft it won't be limited in this boat but the snook and red fishing back in the around flamingo has been about as good as i've ever seen take a little ride back there run the shallow banks on the way over and then uh i figure we can um hit some islands this morning. Yeah, that might be kind of cool. So that fishing back around Flamingo has been incredible this year. Uh, the, the grass has just come back in, in miraculous form this year, and the fishing has just been red hot. The snook are everywhere. Uh, just really cool to get back there and check it out. Well, that area had a really tough year last year and, uh, and a couple years leading up to it. And there's been some really big things that have happened and, and some organizations that have gotten involved and made some big things happen that have certainly helped. I think nature also helped this year uh, because a lot of those areas where we were fishing didn't have any grass there. We had a big seagrass die off. Everybody was incredibly worried about it. And man, I just have the most optimistic attitude about it because here we are a year later, there's been a few small things that have changed and the, the result is obvious changes in the, in, I mean, it's not like, oh, you see that, uh, how you can kind of see it's a little bit different. No, there was no it, it, grass it was there massive. and now it's completely covered. Yeah, it was amazing. You know, it was heartbreaking a couple years ago to go to some of these areas where I, you know, fished my whole life and just, and see just, you know, thousands of square miles, um, just the grass is gone. It's just, it's just mud. Um, and you know, you're just like, wow, when, how long is it gonna take for this to come back? And, and um, apparently not long. Um, you know, just the right conditions for whatever those are. Um, you know, the resiliency of, of the area, the grass in one year, it's gone back to where all these areas, now there's beautiful grass on there and the fishing has just gotten incredible. There have been quite a few reds around there. Instead of being the 15 inches, they're 18, 20, 22. And the great thing that's going on back here now is the, the, all the, the seagrass is growing back. Yeah, that's really good. It's very encouraging. Well, it's been a, been a year of some major victories on the conservation front for the water. And uh, I think a lot of people are seeing that there's some real solutions out there that can make for some lasting change. Kind of getting behind it, you know? That's awesome. I got a lot of, a lot of um, confidence that if we do make some changes with getting the water flowing south, we're likely to see the best fishing we've ever seen ever in our lifetime. Well, it's, it's getting there right now. I mean, this has been one of the best years we've seen in a long, long time. We get to Flamingo, we uh, wait for the tide to get low. It's been real high that morning, and we wanted to let it kind of get low so these fish would kind of fall off the flats and, and narrow the field a little bit. Um, but we started off against the, the mangroves, and that's typically what I like to do is high tide up against the mangrove shorelines, low tide out on the edges of the flats. Um, and uh, it was kind of in between, but we uh, had enough time to get a couple casts in around the island. Um, once you get in towards Flamingo, there's so many shallow flats all around the island. There's always a place to hide, um, and there's just always some sort of good fish in there. Be had. There he is. That's a good one. Yeah. Right on. 
What is this? I'm thinking redfish. Yes, sir. That's cool. Man, he's got a lot of orange in him. Yep, this is, remember we were catching the 15 inchers? Yep. He's probably that same group of fish. He's up to probably uh, 18. How many? 17, 18, I don't know, 20 inches. Not this one, but the, that same group of fish. This guy's probably 17. I'm gonna go trout fishing with you. <laughs> Pretty fish, though. We had fished that area enough to kind of get the idea that you know, it might be a good opportunity to move to another place where there is a big channel that dumps out between two flats. And you can kind of see the birds starting to wade on the flats. And on the edge of the flat, that's where all the mullet had already moved off of the flat and they are also trying to get out of this deep channel. So the mullet are staying in the safest area that they can get. So this mullet mud is extending all the way down through there. And you started saying, man, it, we need to cast where we're seeing the mullet because obviously that's where the fish are gonna be. There he is. There you go. What do you got? Feels like a red fish. Oh, nice snook, snook. man. Wow. There we go. <laughs> that's great, dude. Feels like a redfish. Wow, he hammered it. feels like a snook. <laughs> right in here with all these mullet. Right where the water is so dirty from the mullet, they're in here feeding on the same thing. That's what they want to eat. They like this shrimp. Look how yellow his fins are. Nice job, dude. Yeah, it's an interesting scenario we had there. Off to our right in the shallows, you can see how dark the water was. That was all that beautiful grass that's grown back in, in this last year. You know, it was very healthy, and there's all kinds of life up there. You can see the mullet jumping around, splashes where snooker chasing them and stuff. And even though we, we, we tried it up on the shallow stuff, all our action seemed to be right on that one edge, right where it started to drop off. And, um, and it was only about three feet of water, I think, where we were getting most of our, our best bites. Very, very healthy looking fish. I think the Florida Bay and this whole area is on its way to major recovery. Oh, big snook. Whoa. Big snook. Jumbo size. Big snook. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you in part by Hawks K Resort. Find what lures you. Lawrence, America's number one fish finder. B&W Trailer Hitches, towing adventure. Mercury Marine, go boldly. St. Croix Rods, the best rods on earth. Waypoint, and by Ameritrail. Daiwa. Marathon, Power Pole, and Vibe. It wasn't a particularly windy day, but a lot of times, you know, we, we fish out of Hawks Cay in a lot of different kinds of boats because there's so much different kind of fish in here. I mean, we might fish out of a 36 yellowfin, we might fish out of the 21. We've got bay boats with towers. And over the years, you know, we might trade these boats out for a different one. But one of the things that happens here is that just, just right here on a windy day, it's really convenient just to go under one of these little bridges. Yep. But if you got a tower on your boat, you can't do it, right? So today we're fishing out of the skiff and we can idle under the smallest little bridge that there is right, right here by Hawks K and then line up on the next bridge out and, and we have this perfect running angle with the wind and everything to, to make it right to Flamingo. It was a great way to start the day, just, just heading straight out. You know, when we got up there on the shallows and poked around, that's one of the reasons we wanted to bring the little skiff is that we could get up there and, and sight fish them on the flats and we saw a few snook up on the flats chasing the mullet around we had a couple shots here and there but everything was kind of working their way off the mullet schools are working their way off the flats and the bigger snook the majority of them were just waiting right on that edge that's the ambush spot right off the edge of the flat there he is that's a good one. Oh, big snook whoa big snook. jumbo size big snook wow that is a toad right on man right in that dirtiest of the water on the edge of the channel. Oh, look at the size of this guy. In there chasing these mullet, I guess. Feeding right with him. That is a really big one, dude. Wow. Yeah, that guy's not making a living on shrimp. 
He ate yours. He's, eat, he's eating whatever he wants to eat. Yeah, she's eating some one pound mullet. Gosh, that's a big one, dude. I'm... <laughs> wow. Maybe we should have brought a bigger net. <laughs> uh, we got plenty. <laughs> that's cool, man. These guys have been, the fish, snow fishing's been great everywhere. All back here around Flamingo. That is amazing. He's taking me out on this channel. I guess I should go, go after him. Not too often you have to chase a snook, Tom. Right? <laughs> the fish that, that we're catching in that situation are, are your typical kind of flamingo snook. Not, not the biggest ones like we've seen in other areas of Florida, but you know, really nice, healthy fish and very plentiful. So we're, we're picking off some of those, but occasionally you're gonna see that there's a different caliber of fish that's gonna hang in there because the mullet that we're seeing, in, you know, they're, they're like this big. It's gonna take a pretty big fish. That little fish that, that I'm catching, you know, a fish like this, it might take a swing at one of those mullet like that, but really to put a fish down that's, that's this big, you're gonna need to see like a, you know, a, a 30 to 35 inch snook. And sure enough, man, you throw out there, and that's exactly what you found. <laughs> yeah! Right on. Wow! Good job, man. That's that is one, one of my biggest snook, man. That's like what we caught in Jupiter. That's right. Golly. It's a great fish. Wow. That's what I'm talking about. Great Golly. fish. Golly. He's not as yellow. Look at that. Like that other one we caught was God. beautiful yellow on the fins. This one's a little darker. That is awesome. He's totally up here eating, eating whatever he wants. Big. That's a mullet eater right wow. there. I'm surprised we caught him on that shrimp. Wow. I mean, he'll eat whatever, but definitely mullet, that mullet eater. How, how heavy is he? Jeez. Six pounds, maybe? Eight pounds? Gosh. That's a great one, man. That is nice. Wow. Healthy area. I think we found the right area There's now. healthy fish. Edge of this mud where all these mullet are at. Man, he, he really ran. I mean, that was, you know, he was on the edge of that channel, had the current with the channel coming through there. It was a good fight on that little rod. I mean, he was taking big runs. That was a nice fish. I mean, one of the bigger snook I've caught in that area. I knew right away that was a solid fish. When, when that rod came tight, it was a lot different than those little, little snook. It's ready to get one like that. Yeah. Whew. There he is. Good one. There he is. Oh, yeah, he's going Redfish. Is it? All right. Good job, dude. Red dogger. Nice fish. Kevin Van Dam. I wasn't in. expecting the redfish. That's cool, man. Very healthy. Man, this place. I can't get over the change just in a year. I mean, big year. That was the, kind of the overall theme of the day was the health, healthy. And you know, you're looking around and there's just so much bird life. Like that's the, the thing going to the Flamingo area. It's just a no lose situation. It's so beautiful up there. You see so many different types of birds and you see so much wildlife. And you know, you're looking around and there's this grass regrowing in these places where, where there was none. And we're seeing clear water in places where there, there was none. And, that was kind of the theme for the whole day, you know, that, you know, here we are in this healthy place. Every fish we're catching just looks dime bright and perfect, like it had never been touched before. And uh, and that's really the that's the Everglades, man. It's just a it's just a place that's full of wildlife and full of full of all sorts of aquatic life and, and uh, it's it's as healthy as I've seen it in a long time. That's awesome. Just like you said, there's like a whole new generation of fish here that are all growing up to be about this size. In another year or so, these are all gonna be, I don't know how much bigger, but really good for a fisherman. There's this size class that you, you've told me about a lot. I've been hearing a lot of other people say that they're catching these fish that are about the same size and they're extremely plentiful. 
and uh, there it was. We, we ran right into them. It was kind of cool, though, that on one side of the channel, we didn't get a single redfish bite, and it was all snook. And on the other side of the channel, we didn't get a single snook bite, and it was all redfish. Maybe, you know, for whatever reason, it's the, it's the potholes on one side that allow for the ambush a little bit better, or I don't know, maybe we were just getting lucky. Who knows? Uh, but for sure, snook on one side, redfish on the other. Wonder what was in the middle. <laughs> Little snook. Nice. Man, they are biting. So we have this typical Everglades rig, which is, you know, like a seven foot, eight, 17 pound rod with 10 to 20 pound line and uh, a nice, you know, 4,000 size reel. We're throwing that out there with a, uh, a quarter ounce or, or even a half ounce jig head with a gulp shrimp. Sometimes we'll use a live shrimp. They're not as available this time of the year, so the gulp shrimp works well. Uh, a jerk bait will work just as well. So we're, we're throwing those out there and just kind of moving them slowly across the bottom. And especially in areas where you're seeing some kind of a run out or an area where there's a pothole, that's where these fish are gonna sit and try to ambush some of these mullet as they're coming by. Right on this edge, it's so defined where the mullet are mudding. It's a good one. He's got some bright yellow fins on him. That's awesome, man. So traditionally, we've used power poles on our skiffs and our bay boats. It's been a, just a game changer for us to be able to use these boats and stop on a dime. We can be pursuing a fish, see that fish, hit a button, and instantly, quietly stop so we can cast that fish. Um, instead of having to drop a bulky anchor, we can just push that power pole down in shallow water and, um, and stop the boat. Now the next evolution here for us has been putting these power poles on these bigger boats. Um, so we just got a new 26 foot boat, a 26 yellowfin hybrid, and this boat is, is really awesome because we're able to take it offshore and run around for dolphin and, and tunas and things like that offshore, fish on the reef and stuff. Um, but we also put a troll motor and a power pole on it so we can maneuver this boat in the shallow water. So here we are, we can take this same offshore boat and confidently run through the Everglades, um, maneuver around the mangrove islands, and with that power pole on it, stop it silently and quietly on a dime so that we can fish it effectively for the red fish and snook and other inshore species. This is a real game changer and I would recommend putting a power pole not just on a flat skiff or bay boat but think about putting it on your offshore boat, your center console. It's going to give you the versatility to be able to stop that boat silently and quietly in shallow water without having to drop an anchor. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience presented by Yellowfin is brought to you by Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. Hook, Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's, your adventure starts here. Florida Marine Tracks, clarity in navigation. Buff for the ultimate sun. And by Motor Guide, Nikon, Wiley X, Lithium Pros, and Bernouin Rod Holders. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching the show. You know, we'd like to get to know you better, carry on the conversation, and the best way to do that is follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So as the tide got a little bit lower, um, you know, we switched over to the other side of the channel, and um, and you can see that you know, really, as the, just in the two hours we were there, we looked up on the flats as far as you see, and you know, there was water all the way across the flat. You, know, you could see the birds were up there, and you know, you knew it was getting lower. But then two hours later, it was dry up there on the flats, and all those redfish that had been up way up on the flats in the super skinny water had to work their way out to the edge. So this was, um, you know, really narrowing the field for us. And we started casting the side of that channel, and you know, right away, boom, redfish. On. I hooked one and you hooked one. We had a double going on. Um, those, those redfish were working their way out. No way. Doubled up, but I think Doubled mine's a jack. Up. Wow. Doubled up. What is that? Oh, I got a red. Oh, it looked like a snapper coming in at a funny angle. Really red, red. A red, red. I got a red. All right. Maybe they're all lined up here on the, the same edge. Probably the same age class. Let's see which one. See if they're the same age. Nice. Here's a little bigger. Yeah. Well, that's part of the course. That's cool, though. <laughs> I'm just kidding. 
Right on this edge, huh? Right on the edge. Falling off the flat. I tell you what, it didn't. I didn't move on more than once or twice. Just popped it once or twice, and he was right there. Maybe Beautiful. That, maybe there's a nest though. Looks like he doesn't have a mark on him. It was just a great day to have health of that environment and health of that fishery kind of be the theme for the whole day. There are uh, groups like Captains for Killing Water has maintained this very positive outlook on this situation that yes, it was a dire situation for the water, but look, there was a plan in place, there is a plan in place, and with bringing enough awareness around this, we can make some serious changes. You know, I'm an, I'm an optimist when it comes to that. I think that a lot of things can happen, and I think that nature is, is incredibly resilient, and I'm so happy to see that it is happening right in our backyard right here. This is awesome, man. Right in this one little corner, this is where we, every time we made a pass through here, we've gotten a bite right where the mullet are falling off the flat. Snook are ready. It's a nice one. Man, that is amazing. Snook fishing has gotten so good. Isn't that amazing, Tom? Right here in the same spot. Over and over. It's just amazing. Pretty simple, man. Just stand on this this edge where all the all the mullet are mudding it up. Find the mullet, find the snook. I think this is the best snook year I've ever seen, man. Well, that was good, man. Yeah. So nice to see this area, nice and healthy, and good to go. I'm amazed at how fast this grass came back. Literally in one year, this entire area. It's gone from being mud to pretty grass and water's clearing out and the, and the fishing has been just outstanding. So good stuff, we'll uh, start working our way home.